Staples knows that when the leave-behinds for your sales call get left behind at your office, it's time. When you need to print 30 pages and you're 300 miles from the office, it's time. And when the intern packed the Harrington file, not the Farrington file. Ugh, my bad. It's definitely time. And it's times like these when you can count on Staples. Access your files from email, the cloud, or USB, and then print, copy, fax, or scan them. And get back to business fast. Visit your nearby Staples. It's pro time. You're tuning in to a Goldilocks Productions presentation of a Magical Journey show with Reverend Brian Rawls. Reverend Brian Rawls is a certified psychic medium, a certified fairyologist and realm reader, light language channel and universal channel, certified angelic communicator and facilitator, light code and star key code activator, certified Reiki master teacher, Certified Esoteric Energetic Acupuncturist, Certified Sacred Activations Mastering Me Practitioner, and a Practitioner of Gypsy Magic and the Old Ways. Brian has worked as a psychic medium on high volume hotlines such as Keen, Psychic Live, Psychic Source, and Hollywood Psychic, through which he has undergone a battery of tests. Brian can channel numerous energies to help you and your questions. Call in now to reserve your spot on the switchboard. The call in number is 657-383-1895. Press 1 to get into the host queue so that you may speak with Reverend Brian Rawls. Enjoy this one hour of multidimensional healing. And good evening, this is your host, Reverend Brian Rawls, uh, with A Magical Journey. And we actually have a guest this evening. I know it's not usual for me to have a guest, but um, this fabulous uh, fabulous lady from um, around near my hometown um, uh, has um, basically blessed me with her presence this evening. And her name is actually uh, Priestess Rose, or what she goes by um, is Priestess Rose. She is a mystic, a spiritualist, and a practitioner of the ancient art of some 30-plus years, as well as the owner and priestess of the Holy Rose Occult and Spiritual Supply in the historic city market located in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. As a child with many serious health issues, she was visited by many beings who she has grown to know and work with over the last few decades, as well as many teachers and mentors from a wide and diverse scope of pathways. A sworn daughter of Hakate in Mali and sister of the Rose and devotee of Mary Magdalene, as well as a friend of the Fae, Priestess Rose does not gravitate to uh, egocentric titles and will often be uh, heard saying to question uh, questioners, I am what I am. I walk the path of the rose. No title I decree makes me any better or lesser than anyone else. And let's uh, all give a warm welcome to Priestess Rose. Hey, Rose, how are you? Hey, Brian, I'm well. How are you tonight? I am doing wonderful, and thank you for joining us this evening. Oh, it's my honor. Thank you for asking me. Wonderful. So uh, can you give us a little bit of an uh, explanation of the reason uh, why um, your occult and spiritual supply store is called the Holy Rose? Well, um, five years ago when my husband and I decided that I was going to take this pilgrimage of of building and opening an occult supply store, um, we debated over a lot of names. And we had decided on one name, but then that night uh, when I went to sleep, uh, I had a dream, more like a travel, um, in which... Uh, the the Mother Mary came to me and she presented me a red rose, hence the my logo. Um, and she said the Holy Rose. 
and behind her was Hecate, and behind Hecate was Kuan Yin, and behind Kuan Yin was Kali and Durga, and all of these goddesses just kept walking up to me and handing me a red rose and saying the holy rose. So I woke up from from the dream immediately and woke my husband and I up and said, I have the name, I have the name, we need to call it the holy rose. So, uh, no, it's not named after me. Um, actually, people named me after the store. <laughs> uh, okay. So is, uh, is Rose your birth name? Uh, it's my middle name. Oh, uh, okay. It's, okay. It's my middle okay. name. It's not my first name. Okay. But nobody knew okay. that. They just came in the store and would automatically call me Rose and... Um, after correcting people for about six months, I just gave in and was like, okay, I'm, I'm Rose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. So, um, so definitely, uh, definitely do explain, uh, what you, uh, what you mean to the callers, what exactly, um, um, it means by being a sworn daughter of Hakate Inalia. Um, Hecate Analia is um, kind of an aspect like people might recognize Yemiya. Uh, mm-hmm. She is the goddess of the sea in Hecate mm-hmm. form. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting uh, perspective that you have on uh on the different aspects of goddesses, which I know that many um, paths have different aspects of of one particular um, being or one particular deity. So that's very interesting. And I'm very, uh, very, um, uh, I'm really digging your uh, your, um, way of not using titles and saying the whole... um, whole phrase of I am what I am. Tell me exactly how did you come about that? Um, you know, being in the store, you know, you I literally I, I speak to hundreds of people every week that come through the store. And a lot of people want to ask me, um, what are you? What what do you do? What do you practice? What do you believe in? And I Personally, I think that's a very personal question to ask someone. Um, Mm -hmm. And my answer to them usually is, like I said, I am what I am. And what I am shouldn't concern you. What you should be concerned with is what you are. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not meant to be, you know, it's not meant to be, you know, aloof or anything. It's just it's not important what I am when people come in there. What's important is their path and what they're looking for and what they're exploring. Exactly. I just don't now, I don't want people to try to model themselves after what I do. Exactly. I walk exactly. the path of Rose. They need to walk the path of them. You walk the path of Brian. Everyone needs exactly. to create their own path and make their own way. Exactly. Exactly. And um I uh I am a little curious um because uh I um uh I'm a little curious of how uh um and are you a devotee of Mary Magdalene uh, as in like um are you in devotion to her? I am. Okay. Yes. I um I kind of figured that um because the uh goddess energy is very strong within you. Very strong within you, and I love it that you work with the Fae. They, um, they are actually very uh, close to, um, uh, close to uh, working with me as well. So, uh, I, I dig that you work with the Fae. And in particular, um, very, um, um, very kings or queens that you work with in particular. Um, I mainly work with the divas. Um, mm-hmm. As a young child. Uh, as I, you know, as you said in my beginning, I was very sick as a young child, um, hospitalized sick, major surgeries sick. And um, I I crossed the veil a couple times with a very high fever um, with them trying to keep me alive. And during those times, um, as you can imagine, a child alone in the hospital, 
um, it was the divas who came to me and would comfort me. And so I've always kind of had a connection with them, um, meaning like rose divas, the tree divas, um, the divas of the cosmos that work with cosmic law. Um, and they would just tell me that, you know, I was going to be all right because it, it was, that's just, it was so that I was going to be okay. And uh, I've worked with them and had their guidance in my life ever since. Um, taking a brief hiatus as a teenager of trying to deny that I was different than anyone else. <laughs> Very interesting. So what actually brought you to Raleigh, North Carolina? My husband, actually. I lived in New York State, and my husband had um, several businesses here, and we were dating long distance, and one of us had to move, and I didn't have the ties that he had, so I moved to North Carolina. And did you originally have uh, a connection with the um, with the geometrical shape of the triangle before you came here? Um, you know, it's always been kind of present in a lot of practices. Um, I studied a lot of um, Egyptian religion when I was younger, um, meaning in my 20s. <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, the triangle is very much a part of all that. So it always did have a draw to me, um, the all-seeing eye and pyramids and all of that. Very interesting. So I know that um, I know that we have uh, some phone, uh, phone callers already um, that are wanting to talk to uh, uh, yourself as well as my, uh, um, myself. Um, but I, w- I want you to kind of uh, give a person a gist of what it is that you are available for them to ask because uh, some folks uh, or some of the callers that I deal with uh, will just come in and be like, what do you pick up on me? And I won't want you to just be clear and not be like put on the spot, okay? Yeah, absolutely. Um, all of my readings, everything that I do, I do in person. Um, meaning that unlike someone like yourself who can just kind of tap in, I need to be physically in the same room with someone to be able to read them. I need to feel their energy and hear their name and sit with them a minute. Sometimes I even hold their hands for a minute. Um, So, you know, the just what do you feel around me isn't kind of a question for me on the radio. Um, Mm -hmm. But I'd be more than willing to answer questions about uh, my shop, what my shop has, what my shop offers, uh, magical questions, you know, if they have questions about spell work or anything like that. Questions about reading cards, because I'm a very, uh, very unique form of card reader. So, if they wanted a different perspective, I read that. And can you explain the way that you do your readings in uh, in person, as in like a just a little short narrative of uh, of how you would kind of begin? Sure. Um, I usually begin by. with each person, it's different, but kind yes, of like with every your, reading is with, absolutely different. Um, yeah, I usually sit down with them first, let them get comfortable with me because most of them it's their first time meeting me. So um, mm-hmm. I ask them to tell me why they're there, and without giving me too much, you know, don't give me the life story because I do need to read for you, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But sometimes I will have them pick crystals. Sometimes I'll consult my, I do use a crystal ball for, for um, I wouldn't so much call it scrying as it's kind of a way spirit talks to me. I don't usually mm-hmm. see things, but I hear things from it. Um, and I decide which card decks I'm going to use. I use anywhere from one to five decks for one reading. And I blend them all together Um depending on what the person's person's uh, issues may be. And then we take Very. it through there and we talk about pathway, we talk about blockages, what we may do need to do to remove them, you know, which may even include coming to see someone such as yourself. Um, mm-hmm. 
you know, and different hurdles. And, and a lot of times they leave with homework. Um, a lot of people come to see me when they, they're feeling constrained and they're feeling stuck like they're spinning their wheels and they're a little lost. Um, I don't get a lot of people that come to me with, um, you know, specific, like, will I get this job questions. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, all the uh, all the best gypsies, we all use uh, crystal balls. I uh, do have to say so myself. Crystal ball, um, the crystal ball is one of my favorites. Uh, so Mine yeah, too. all the best <laughs> gypsies, all the best gypsies use crystal balls. So uh, very neat, very neat. But um, uh, also, uh, what do you mean by? Or uh, I know I know what you mean by. Um, possibly having to do some work for the uh, clients. But what exactly for the callers, what do you mean? I uh, kind of break it into a non-practitioner format. Sure, sure. Sorry, I get my head about a little sometimes. Um, sometimes people, when they feel stuck, you know, I mean, you know as well as I do, the first thing a lot of people go to is that someone's done something against them. Um, yeah. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to say that's probably not the case. Mm-hmm. But what the case I usually find is, is that no one else has crossed them. They've crossed themselves with negative thought patterns, with repeating patterns, you know, kind of that whole keep doing the same thing and expecting different results sort of thing. Um, mm-hmm. We truth talk when we sit down and we discuss, you know, what things we might need to break down and let go um, sometimes there are blockages and chakras and life patterns that need um, a practitioner such as yourself that can go in with different modalities, be it sound or Reiki, you know, different things like that to help remove those blockages so that they can move forward and start to expand. Very interesting. And uh and just for those folks that doesn't know exactly what she means by uh, uh, kind of like opening the road and uh, road opening work, uh, yes. just as, as just as clear as how I do my activations. I channel my energy through my voice. She channels her energy through candles and uh, words and workings mm-hmm. in her manner. So uh, that's a little bit of a, a quick thing for um, kind of giving the callers a little bit of how uh, how me and you work differently. Yeah, uh, and absolutely. Differently is what makes the practitioner um, each. If practitioner worked uh, the same, there would be no reason for uh, all of us to be out there and all of exactly. us to be called out by different people. So we we yeah, all have different strengths. Exactly. We all have different uh like say for instance a witch is a witch, a healer is a healer, a light worker is a light worker, a priestess is a priestess. Exactly. Yeah. So we uh we are going to go to the phone lines and um, I uh, I know this was uh, and this is where you'll probably get a little nervous, but don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, uh, so uh, I'll take all the hard questions and I'll okay. hand you all the uh, easy ones. Uh, but uh, but I'll uh, kind of uh, lead if um, if they um, come at uh, come at us with a uh, question of like. What do you see? Okay, so okay. just to make you um, make you feel more comfortable. Okay, so uh, let's go through the phone lines at area code two zero one and uh, two zero one first name Hi. and question. Yes, I'm Jennifer. Hey, I'm Jennifer, Jennifer, and how New are Jersey you? Calling? Yeah, I'm a little okay. nervous. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what to ask. Um, I have so many things. Um, could you tell me like a as far as like romance goes, I just recently met this person and I feel like I have like, you know, had much luck in the love department. <laughs> so I just wanted to know what kind of vibes you were picking up if this was um, a potential thing or 
keep okay, moving so we're, on. <laughs> now, uh, can you give uh, give me at least the beginning of the um, letter of the name or the name? If you, beginning, uh, A. It starts with an A. It starts with an A. Okay, so what I am seeing mm-hmm. here is I am seeing that there is uh, – some strain on communication. Um, This communication may be strained due to a distance going on um, between the two of you, Uh, but um, uh, it should, uh, I do see as if there is going to be a um, a strengthening to this relationship. Uh, So I don't know if they have been a little bit um, busier than usual, but I do know that. Very busy, yeah. And yeah. then it's like they uh, tried to say they were coming to see me, and then I was sick and couldn't see them. It's like, it's just, I all don't right. know, is that yeah. like the slide? You know what I mean? Like, it, But, yeah, he's like, he can't wait to see me again. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know. Okay, well, this right here, this right here is, uh, is uh, here for you to start. Uh, to trust oneself as well as trust other people. So this is kind of like a lesson for you. And uh, and basically with that lesson for you, um, maybe um, Rose has some type of, uh, of uh, love stone that she can recommend or... Uh, or a love bath that she can recommend that would uh, would kind of change the energy a little bit. So, Rose, you... Yeah, you... I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jennifer. Um, what I... I would recommend, I'm, I'm a big, um, I'm a big crystal user. I love to mm-hmm. use crystals. Um, and I would say for you, maybe a little combination for you, um, a, I would say Amazonite because you need to speak your truth. You need to feel okay with speaking your truth and asking for what you want. Um, sometimes the biggest hurdle in a relationship can be expecting the other person to know what we want. And uh, not everybody can do that. So an Amazonite works with the throat chakra and it could help you um, you know, be a little more confident with speaking your truth. If combined with septarian, which is the communication stone, um, would would ease you in being able to speak your truth, um, make it flow easier for you and help you not be so nervous. And I would also yeah. um, maybe advise uh, maybe some ruby fuchsia. Ruby fuchsia is a heart chakra opener. And... Mm-hmm. Um, I do. I don't know if Brian would agree with me, and I don't. Like I said, I usually only read with people when they're in the room, but I sense a little bit of fear with you, a little bit of being afraid to open your heart to someone because of being hurt in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, And Brian said, you know, trust. I think it's as much about trusting yourself and your feelings as it is trusting the other person to be truthful with you. Um, Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, something to help you open that heart chakra and feel a little more soothed and a little more comforted, um, which is what Ruby Fuchsite can do for you. And uh, try to carry them around with you, sleep with them under your pillow. Uh, You can take a nice uh, Himalayan salt bath with them in the tub with the hot water and ask the spirits of the stone to work in, to work with you, to help you um, achieve the, the most you can achieve from this relationship. Okay, so it still has hope. (laughs) What's that? All right. I'm saying I'm joking. It still has hope. I just feel like I'm like I'm going to mess it up, you know? That's all. <laughs> well, you got to learn to trust yourself. you got to learn to right. trust yourself. Yes, trust just be like yourself. That because, yes, well, most so from definitely. From your perspective of this person, you feel like, you know. Yes, and from. Um, interested. From, They're not like an idiot or something I shouldn't talk to, right? <laughs> yeah, they're they're definitely uh, you don't not get like, it, like a red flag about them. Okay. No, I don't get no red flag. I really <laughs> perceive that this is a genuine uh, a genuine uh, attraction, um, but yeah. it's more of uh, kind of like you kind of getting in yourself way. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah, back up from that, um, back up from that mistrust, mistrust of oneself and mistrust of others. 
um, because it's definitely, a, uh, I would have to say it's probably a repeating pattern in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was in love with this person for longer than I should have been, and um, like I'm finished with them. So like then this person came in, so <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, yeah. move forward from that, bring everyone in, and see what happens. Well, definitely uh, find you some uh, ruby f- uh, fuchsia, like uh, Rose said, and uh, and I'm pretty sure if you uh, it's in you're in New Jersey, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure if you can't find any around there, I'm pretty sure that you can probably hop a uh, uh, hop in a car and drive probably about I think it's like six seven okay. hours uh, from us and. <laughs> You can buy some uh, crystals from Rose's shop. <laughs> now, where's, where's that website? Or... That is in Raleigh, it's, uh... North Carolina. Where is it? In Raleigh, North Re- Carolina. Oh, okay. I yeah, actually have there. a lot of customers <laughs> from New Jersey. Oh. Yeah, we got problems in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, guys. Um, well, thank You're you welcome. for calling. Good luck. Heart. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, sweetie. Okay, so, see, Rose, it uh, it goes smoothly, and we yeah. we love to laugh here on uh, here on the A Magical Journey show. So don't be afraid to crack the joke. Okay, so let's go okay. on to our. Uh, our next phone caller, which is area code 216, and this is Sharon. Hello, Sharon. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Sharon. Brian. Hi there. Um, thanks for taking my call, Brian. You're welcome. Um, I, know I've, I know I've called you a couple times, but I can finally say, I, I know you don't remember every reading you do, but um, I got a job offer, and I start Monday. I'm so happy. I, I'm positive I made the right decision. What do you see going on? Is this going to work out? Um, okay, so I do see as if this is uh something that uh has definitely been um been long waited for and it's right up up your alley and this is something that uh that is a it has room for being able to uh climb the corporate lab uh ladder if you will. Um and I do see that this is a uh, a decent amount of income, and income that right. kind of gives you some comfortable uh, comfortable type of um, comfortable type of movement, kind of like some wiggle room to kind of do whatever the hell you please. I mean, excuse my language, do whatever Relax. the heck you please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian, it's taken so long. The person that hired me, the man, it's going to work out between him and I. That's that's the main person I'm good, but I'm working for a group of people. But you know what I mean. Or write his name on a piece of paper and dig a hole in your backyard and put him in the backyard. Oh wow! Put his name on a piece of paper, dig a hole, and put it in there. Uh huh. Put it in the backyard. Make sure you put everybody that you does not and that you do not want to go ahead of you. You put them behind you in your backyard. Oh wow. You can put even, like, say, for instance, bill collectors. I have millions of Thank God I don't have <laughs> bill collectors in my backyard. <laughs> That's so. a little old gypsy trick right there. Yes. That, is is it going to work? The job is going to work out for myself, though. It's a good move for me, obviously. Yes, this is most definitely a good move for you. And, um, and I will tell you one thing. And I know this is uh, this is probably your for, uh, forte, uh, Rose. But get you some what you, what is called earth smoke or fumaria, and you want to brew it in like a strong tea, and then you want to wash the bottom of your feet with it, and then also sprinkle it around your house. And what that will do is that will uh, bring in a steady flow of income, and it will basically build on top of each other. Oh my! I have never heard of those things. Wow! A little, okay, a little Jezebel awesome. oil too. Jezebel oh, oil yeah. wow. every day when you go to work. A little dab on the what palm is, of each hand. 
the bottom What's of each called? foot and on the back of the neck. Jezebel, Jezebel? oil, it's called. Jezebel. Yes. I believe in that stuff. Bottom of the feet, my hands in the back of the neck? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. And that makes, like, what makes good things? It What it does is um, when you need people to listen to you and you need people to um, adhere to what you're trying to do, like going into a business situation, you need people to pay attention to the way you're doing things and you want to excel, you're going into a meeting, you need to speak and make people listen to you. It's kind of a take command oil for women. Wow. I have never heard of that. But I will ask you this. Um, how do you spell it? Because <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm <laughs> Jezebel. Jezebel, like in the Bible. J-E-Z-E-B-E-L-L. Oh, Sorry, one L. Thank you. <laughs> Wow. Yes, I mean, and yeah, it even works for gay up. men, too. <laughs> oh, yes, it you? does. Yes, it does. It should. Why? Oh, my God. I, that doesn't even surprise me at all. I mean, why that wouldn't? <laughs> They're just as equal. We're all equal. But um, Absolutely. So the bottom line is, though, the, the main thing is, Brian, without doing any of this, the, the man that hired me, we're going to be able to get along and excel together. That's That's the main thing. Oh, of course, of course. And okay. if he ever gets slippery tongue with you, write his, pe- <laughs> um, his uh, name yeah. on a piece of paper and stick it underneath your shoe. Stick it in the sole oh, of your shoe God. And, God. and make sure that your heel uh, basically presses on the name paper. And what that will do is make sure that you pin him down and you, and yeah. you basically will have the upper hand in everything. Oh, yeah. my God. I just, I never knew about that stuff. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much, oh. both of you, Brian. I know you have you put up with me asking, but tons. it's been a stressful year trying to, oh, you what, what did you say? tons of shit with a piece of paper and a <laughs> pencil and a name. <laughs> Absolutely. Put it uh, inside your shoe in the heel. If someone gives me a hard set, that gives me control. That's basically what it is. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Thank you both, yeah. Brian. Again, thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome, darling. Thank, Thank you. you, Sharon, for day. calling, sweetie. Thanks. You good luck, Sharon. You. You're such a sweetie. Young man, you're so young, I know. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> okay, so um, we are going to take uh, another phone caller, and then uh, we are going to go back to the interview with Priestess Rose. And area code 203, and I, uh, area code 203. Mm. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hi. Good. Hi. Um, I was wondering if uh, you could possibly tell me when my job search will finally be over, because I'm exhausted, <laughs> and I really want another job. Okay, so uh, are you uh, are you out of a job currently? Because I'm seeing no. that you're not quite out of a uh, out of your current job yet. <laughs> not quite, almost. <laughs> I've got all right. Put so out the door. Uh, okay, so, so um, so I will tell you, uh, like you said, it's almost like you got your right foot out the door, and you're just sitting there straddling the threshold of the door. Uh, and I'm going to say it like that too, just a simple reason, because you have a job that is getting ready to come into uh, perspective right in about three to four weeks. And uh, and I will tell you, it feels like um, uh, you will be, it feels to me like you will be putting in your uh, your notice um, either, either a couple of days before the new moon or uh, or the week of the new moon. Oh, okay. And the new moon falls on the new moon falls on the twenty third. So that um, with that new moon energy, it could be either the twenty first that you receive this, or the twenty fourth through the twenty eighth. So you have kind of like a shy window of like seven days. Um, but maybe um, Priestess Rose has some uh, some information about like a 
um, a job uh, spell or a job stone. Absolutely. Or a, there Absolutely. You go. Um, I'm a firm believer in repetitive mantras, um, and one that has never failed me. And and people, this can be used for jobs, money, lovers, homes, whatever you want it to be. You need to light an apple green candle for new beginnings for you because you're looking for a job. And the mantra would be, the job that I am seeking is also seeking me. Okay. <laughs> Like and you that? just just chant it over and over and over again uh, while the candle is burning. You could also light a red candle, um, appeal to St. Expedite to speed that job up in coming to you. Yes, we all love St. Expedite. Yes, St. Expedite. He's the bomb. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. and he loves cake. You feed him cake, he works quick. Mm-hmm. And would it be too much to ask which state this job might be coming from, whether it's my current state or? Um, I am not exactly sure of a um, particular location as of right now. Um, It could be too soon to actually uh, bring in a particular state of, uh, of, I guess you would say, um, of location. But I can definitely tell you that uh, it um, you will you will or you would have or well you will have wanted to go to this particular state many 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 times before and you just haven't had the, the chance to. So it's kind of going to be like a new adventure for you, and I don't know if this new adventure. Uh, gives you butterflies in your stomach, or if you have one of them, uh, um, uh, them digestive system that doesn't uh, react well to new things. But uh, it just feels to me like uh, I ha- I have a bunch of butterflies flying around in my stomach, almost like there's a nervousness as well as a adventure scheme to this, and uh, it's almost like Hmm. It's uh, it's a uh, it's a way to make money, and it's something new. It's uh, it's something uh, it's something that it uh, it brings. Uh, it almost uh, it feels to me like it brings excitement to you. Almost like you uh, you want to do it, or Whoa, there are. That's nice. <laughs> so, and do know that not every day will you wake up and want to do this, but do know that. Uh, that most days you will wake up and uh, and enjoy going to work, okay? Because not everybody uh, everybody can have a peachy life, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> I'm just kind of trying to hand it to you real. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm so exhausted from my efforts, and sounds good. Two weeks, about two weeks, two to three weeks. Yes, most definitely. And uh, remember what um, uh, um, Rose said about the um, apple green candle and also St. Expedite. St. Expedite is quick at bringing uh, things very or in a, in a expedited motion. So, yeah, uh, just be very specific. Sure. Yes. Okay. All okay. right. <clears throat> yes. All right. Thanks and thank again. you so much. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye, sweetie. Bye bye. Okay. So we're back to the interview with Priestess Rose. And uh, if you're just now tuning in uh, with us, uh, uh, we have a very special guest. Her name is Rose. And uh, she is the owner and priestess of the Holy Rose in the Triangle area of Raleigh, North Carolina. And um, and Rose, uh, can you uh, give uh, the callers um, some information of how they can find uh, your website as well as also 
on how they could possibly have um, work done uh, with you or uh, any particular uh, um, I do see on your website that you have a page here as an online store. Do you are you getting ready to open up an online store? Um, the no, no, that's that's old. We did have an online store for quite some time, uh, but there's mm -hmm. just quite simply um, when you own an online store. I don't know um, that many people know this, but what happens is there's certain vendors that sell certain things. And nine times out of ten when you have an online store, and I'm not saying everybody's store is this way, um, what you do is the people place an order with you and you get it drop shipped, what it's called, from the factory where it comes from. So it never really touches you. It doesn't touch your hands before it goes to the person. And because many of my wares in my shop are handmade, um, we we can't process like that. Um, so while I do offer a very personal approach of which people can call the shop and give us the list of what they need or what, you know, even speak to me or uh, my son, Jared, or my husband, John, who all work at the store, um, give us an idea of what it is you're looking for and we can make some suggestions. And um, then we hand pick ourselves out, be it a crystal or you know, a candle or whatever it is, um, then we personally ship it directly to you. I, I like things to be a little more old school like that. Um, that's just me. It doesn't allow me to sell the volumes that a lot of um, people do mail order wise, but um, that's okay. I'd rather have it be personal. Yes, most definitely. Per, um, personal is best. Personal is best. I know I am a uh, I am a teacher uh, of the metaphysics, and I like teaching more one on one classes than I do group classes because one on one personal classes they seem to fit and suit the client better than group classes do. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's um, I do consultations at the shop. Um, of course, we do readings um, at the shop. My readings, as well as John's, are described on our on our website. It's theholyrose.com. dot com, um, and we just do a lot of personal work. We are at the store a lot. We consult on the floor a lot. Um, we just like to talk to people. We like to be you know, in the groove and know what people are looking for. And um, I often pick up, as I'm sure you do, on themes of what's going on in the world by what everybody's looking for. I can always pick out a stone of the month and things like that because of what's going on. Yes. And is there a number that uh, you're able to give uh, long-distance clients to call in and make these personal orders? Yes, the shop number is 919-803-5787. And the shop itself is very busy, so if you call and get the voicemail, please do leave a detailed voicemail, and we will call you back. Yes, and uh, and again, if you are uh, a local in the Raleigh area, uh, would you like to give the um, address? Yeah, it's 311 Blake Street. It's in Historical City Market in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, it's a it's a lovely area of cobblestone streets and, and old brick buildings, and I just absolutely love it down there. Um, we're right at the at the end of Moore Square in the city, and uh, a lot of history down there, and it's it's a beautiful area. Yes, it is filled with history down there. So if you ever take a trip and you want to, you want a little bit of history, a little bit of magic, and a little bit of uh, city life, Raleigh is a perfect place to go. So make sure you drop by and make sure you see Rose. Uh, so, um, Rose, uh, I want to, uh, um, I want to also ask you about your, uh, your lovely Holy Rose uh, guardian uh, named the Lord Bastion. 
tell us a little bit about him. Uh, yeah. I, I love cats because my co-host is actually my uh, my cat, Elliot. That's awesome. Every now and then you'll probably hear him meow, but not usually. He's usually either lying on my altar or uh, hanging on the back seat of, uh, back seat of my office chair. But right now he's you got to love him. MIA. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so tell us about uh, Lord Miss, Bastion. Yes, he is uh, Monsieur Bastien, Lord of the Rose, is his full name. Um, and Bastion is my three-year-old, 18-pound, uh, half Maine Coon black cat. Um, he has just become quite a personality at the store. I literally have people that come to take their lunch breaks with him. Um, he gives a lot of cat therapy. It's we we have a central altar in my store, um, in which people can can pray or meditate, and we have a, a a little golden brass cauldron in which people can leave blessings or requests um, that that we burn all of them and give them to the to the universe every full moon. Um, but oftentimes, people do a lot of releasing there. Um, a lot of people cry. A lot of people just kind of break down and, and need some comfort at the altar. And Lord Bastion just loves to go sit with people on the bench and just give some cat therapy. And uh, many, many people ha- have said how much uh, the Lord has helped them. <laughs> he has his own Facebook page, Lord Bastion, um, public figure Lord Bastion. Uh, he loves to run around and say hello to people and show off, and he just has a nice time there, and he's really a, a wonderful addition to the shop. I just adore him. That is interesting. I love it when uh, when uh, practitioners and, um, and um, magical, like-minded folks um, share their animals with uh, other practitioners. And I am just curious, and I'm curious because I am here soon going to be opening up a physical shop. Now, do you get do you come into um, into contact with uh, energy that you have to like once a month clean from the store? Oh yeah, oh yes, every day. Um, you know, because I I personally, and this is just the way I operate, I have. Um, some gigantic uh, crystal generators in the corner of my store um, that are locked up in an octagon cabinet that people can see but they can't touch um, that are constantly protecting, generating, and um, love and energizing protection in, um, in from the corner of the store. But people come in there, you know, and people have a lot of a lot of baggage a lot of times. And the way I so so created um, my shop was that I wanted people to feel like when they walk through my doors that they were transported from the mundane world into a new space, um, a space of peace and quiet and safety um, and and love. Um, because of that, we have we do have rules. We have my rules at my shop. We're a tech-free zone. I want people to be present when they're there. I don't allow children under the age of 10 there. Um, that's just a, a a personal preference of mine for the quietude of the shop. Um, and I don't allow cell phone conversations, obviously, because we're tech-free um, mm-hmm. within the shop. But uh, I feel that when you have a space like that, a lot of people, you know, will come in and say, I was so stressed out and now I'm not, or I had a terrible headache and now it's gone. Well, you and I both know as practitioners that that energy went somewhere, right? So it's in the store. It's in the store. So my store is completely smudged and I have special, um, I have special tinctures and waters that I make specifically for the store for cleansing Mm -hmm. and purification. And, um, we use sage, we use Palo Santo, we use, uh, many, many things, uh, depending on the, the day, the mood of the day, um, to cleanse the store and all of its properties. So all of the crystals are smudged or sprayed or cleared every morning and every night. 
um, as well as the candles, the voodoo dolls, you know, the herbs, everything that's in there is purified and blessed every morning and every night to keep the energy stabilized in the shop. Wonderful. And I am also uh, um, a little curious on uh, now do you, with you uh, running a public shop uh, and uh, having folks actually come in and out of your shop, do you ever come across those? Uh, and I guess I'm going to ask you just blankly <laughs> ask you, do you ever come across the lunatics that um, – that uh, uh, and, and I know some of us uh, or some of us uh, witchy folks we like to dress in black and stuff, but uh, I mm-hmm. mean it's the color of the rainbow, but um, or it's all the colors of the rainbow mixed into one, um, but or it's all spectrums of the light. But you get my drift. Do you ever get them crazy folks that come in and be like, uh, um, I'm. Uh, Satan worshiper or whatever like those. Do you ever get those folks that come in? You know, you know, Brian, every, I think every shop around kind of gets that sort of element sometimes. And yes, we, we've had our fair share. Um, My shop in particular, um, although I do not judge anyone for what they follow or believe in, that's not my place. Um, Uh But I do adhere I do adhere to um, a path of light. Um, Mm -hmm. My job on this earth is to help people ascend, not descend. Um, So I don't have a lot of things in my shop that would draw um, folks like that. Uh You know, usually if they do come in, they see that there's not much there that they want, and you know, or they'll ask if I have, you know, a certain black book that I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And, uh, oh, yeah. and I don't have it. So, so they leave, you know, and, um, you know, to each his own, like I said, I'm not here to judge. I'm here to help people who need me. Um, but you know, John and I make, um, an effort to not have, um, things that would draw that, that particular element because it's not really what we're about. And exactly, and I uh, I do understand that uh, you necessarily can't um, judge a book by its cover because some of the darkest looking traditions uh, can be very light and um, be very um, very thought provoking and insightful and uh, and guidance so, uh, along the mundane path. So uh, mm-hmm. I very much understand what you're saying. Um, uh, just like I, uh, I have been personally, um, uh, personally been asked if I could, uh, get my hands on the big black book of Quimbanda and I'm like, uh, and what makes you think I could get a hold of that? <laughs> I mean, right. they just think <laughs> you are able to get a hold of the information like that. And I'm like, of course, anybody can get their hands on that, but I think I would want that. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, and and my take on it is in this big wide world of Amazon, who is basically the enemy of small shops like ours, um, Mm -hmm. uh, anything's available through that, through so many modalities online now that I do not feel that I need to be the one to put those things in people's hands. If, If they're going to come upon it, it's not going to be by my doing. Exactly, exactly. And m- most definitely, uh, I have to back you up on that one. Uh, if you want to put your own hands in that uh, type of uh, work, then so be it. But I will not be the one that hands you the book for you to put Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I need to sleep at night. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, uh, Rose, it has been absolutely a pleasure speaking with you and a pleasure having you on this uh, radio show, The Magical Journey uh, Show. Um, I would like for you to give you your contact information uh, if you possibly can once more, uh, just in case we have those uh, frequent um 
uh, frequent people with frequent flyer miles that can uh, fly over from one side of the um, United States to the other in right. just a day. So, uh, yeah, feel free to give your information and give it as zero as you would like. Thank you. Um, the shop's name, again, is The Holy Rose, and it's an occult supply um, esoteric spiritual store. Uh, we carry everything from crystals to voodoo dolls, um, herbs. I have over 200 types of crystals, 100 herbs, um, books and and journals and candles and all kinds of goodies. Um, we're located at 311 Blake Street in Historic City Market, Raleigh, North Carolina, and the shop's number is 919-803-5787, or you can see us on the web at www.theholyrose.com. And thank you again, Rose, for all of your wonderful techniques and wonderful uh, magical recipes. I look forward to having you on the show again and possibly even having your uh, your husband, John, on the show here very soon as oh, well. I'm so, sure John would love I, to. Yes, I look forward to uh, possibly even having your whole family on the show. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I look forward to that. And um, and I just want to thank you again. And if you have any last uh, closing words, you're more than welcome to uh, say them. I, you know, I just did hear that, you know, everyone, my mantra and the mantra within our family is we can all only strive to be a better person than we were the day before. And I try to do that every day and help as many people along the way as I can with a hand up. Um, I wish everyone radiant health and a beautiful, beautiful evening. Thank you uh, for tuning in and, and listening to me. And thank you, Brian, for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, Priestess Rose. You have a beautiful evening. And thank you, all the callers, uh, for calling into the A Magical Journey show. Uh, catch us, uh, well, next Wednesday's uh, show will be canceled due to me being out of uh out of town and we will resume on regular uh business our regular uh show time at 8 p.m eastern uh, eastern standard time on the 26th of july and i look forward to speaking to each and every one of you if you would like to book your uh your personal session with me please dial 586-659-9620 or go to www.brianrawls.com or www.amagicaljourney.com thank you so much let angel wings guide your dreams blessed be and namaste What's the big rush? It's Black Friday in July at Macy's. Wait, isn't Black Friday in... Right, but right now, prices are so low, it's like Black Friday. In July. Exactly. And we get an extra 25 or 15% off with our Macy's card or savings pass. Gotta tell you, these specials are incredible. And we get free shipping online. With any $49 purchase. Okay, what's wrong? Um, shouldn't we have had a big turkey dinner yesterday? It's Black Friday in July, now at Macy's. Exclusions apply, savings off sale prices.